this out of here because my main goal is to get to that combine. And I gotta take the combine out. I gotta move the, this and that baler. I'm gonna just move the drill out of here and I'm gonna hook to the baler and go back and put it over there. And then we're gonna fire the combine. I've already put the air in the back tires. They have leaked out over the last couple of years. So stand yourself back over there so you don't get run over. I was videotaping your ass. Okay, so I'll edit all that out. Got you better. It. All right, so the goal here right now is to get the combine out. Uh, two years ago, I parked it in here. I was so disgusted with the soybean yield that I didn't even wash the machine off. But. You got flat tire. No, not flat tire. What the hell are you talking about? That looks like a flat tire. Okay. I think you're smoking crack. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I've got to move this down out of the way. Which, I got too many M's. There's one, two, three. One, two, three M's here. And there's a 450 over there, and there's another one over in the other building. But anyway, I'm going to move that M out of the way. And then i got to put the batteries that are charging in here. And I'm going to start it up, and I'm going to take it out of here. Now, years ago when we milked cows, yes, we milked cows. I sold them in 2011. If you're a long-time subscriber, you probably remember some of that. This was all... Uh, free stalls for the cattle to come into. Uh, it was for the winter time, the cows would come in, or the heifers and the dry cows would come in here, whereas the dairy barn, the cows were in the barn. Uh, they would get turned out around the bunk feeder in the winter time and then back in the milk, you know, so they had kind of like a loafing pen situation going on there. And then in the summertime, the heifers would be chased back down into the lower pastures as the cows, the dairy cows would have the pastures again. So. Anyhow, with that being said, this was this was all concrete, and it had these metal bars and stuff, and I took them out probably 2007, 2008, because I needed more space, but we were left with this mound of stone and straw material from all that. So, I don't remember why, but I dug it out over there. There might have been something here, and I took it out the other way. But anyways, my goal today is to get the combine out of here get somebody washing it, whether it's Tim, Teresa, or Peyton, or anybody for that matter. And I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to level this out in this spot. I'm going to take all the hay and stuff with the skid steer and remove it and dump that out of my way so it can decompose over time. And I'm going to level all this stone out because when it rains, plus I've got groundhogs starting to undermine in there because it's easy to dig. Because when it rains, the water actually comes in here, and I get a puddle because mm. when we took the concrete out, it, you know, it was lower than grade. Uh, so that will give me an extra probably eight feet of room that I can move the combine over eight more feet. Then I can get the baler in. I can get these antique tractors in. I actually have to plant sweet corn. So it wasn't something that I wanted to do, but I'm going to do it anyway because my grandmother so kindly asked me to. Um, I could get into a whole elaborate story about planting sweet corn, but... I'll take you along for that ride, but while we're doing that, I might as well grab my PTO shaft off that baler and get it on the baler before I forget about it. I It, it was hung on here before and I dropped it, but uh, yeah, this tire on this M, this flat as a pancake, M, and this tire came from Iowa, and it, I took it down the road and it started getting a carbuncle on it, and it blew out. So, I mean, the M runs, it ran, what, not that long ago, maybe, I don't know, how long ago was it? It wasn't long ago at all, but I'll jump start it, boom, fire it up and get it out of here. 
I'll move it over, and then I'll just get everything allocated where it needs to be. But that M, that's a tricky son of a gun. That is a 19, that's a 30. What, that one? This is old. This is an old one. This is an all-fuel model. You can even tell by the differences in the PTO shift. See how they're very different to engage the PTO shaft on that one versus this one? This is a 1950 model. That one, I think, is a 39. Wow. Um, but I have to crank start it. Crank start it, which bust your nuts kind of thing. But I love these little tool boxes. You bust your nuts? You'll bust a nut doing that. But come here, look at this draw bar. This thing, whoever had this, these draw bars are notorious for being weak. So they took a, it, it looks like a bulldozer blade, and they doubled it up. Mm. and welded it fast, that draw bar. Boy, I bet that's a good pulling draw bar because it won't bend. But anyways, with that being said, I'm going to have to... Yeah, see, that's how you engage and disengage the PTO. Oh, wow. Got wow. that big arm on it. But if you come over to this one... Ah, I see. See this one? This one has like a, a little, like a thrust gear. Okay. You know, so there's an idler. I don't know. I've never had this type and of... And that's their PTO? PTO. Power takeoff shaft. Right. So they're very different. The different tractors are different. Um, I think the brakes and everything on that one are the same. Maybe they're a little different. There's just subtle differences about them over the years. But, but they're been, both M. They're both M's, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So anyway, I'm going to get this bitch started, hopefully, without hurting myself. And uh, I'd like to see how you start that. This? Okay. okay. You ready? No. This is how you start these things with a weak battery. It should go, right? All right, you ready? I'll say when. Okay. When. Go out and get some gas. Absolutely. Okay, enough of the shenanigans here. Um, we're pulling the combine out, uh, fired right up as you could see. Um, yeah, I started up the rotors, everything was fine. I expected a family of coons to come flying out of it, but that didn't happen. Uh, yeah, I uh, like I was saying earlier that this, uh, this was a freestall barn and uh, I had to actually take where the cows used to lay because we put them on, on stone. Uh, for drainage and the uh, then, then we would just put straw on top of it cows would work the straw out but there was always you know some kind of manure or stuff that got on top of that and after we took the uh, the free stalls out then you know I just never got finished cleaning it up you know this has been a few years ago and I just need more more room and it, you know no sense building more building space if uh, you've got it right here you just got to get it leveled out cleaned up and ready to go so um, I put this thing in high speed, and uh, me and Teresa are just going to clean this combine. Now, it took hours, and not minutes, not 20 minutes. It took hours. There had been a hydraulic pump that had ruptured out the side and dumped oil all over this thing, which kind of preserved it, um, but it made all that 
soybean fuzz stick to everything. I mean everything. So, uh, yeah. So, she's running the wand, and you can watch the dirt just roll off of this thing. Anyway, enjoy the rest of the video, and, uh, yeah. After all of that time, uh, the combine actually looks pretty good. Uh, I am not selling this combine. It's not for sale. So, it's just not for sale. The other combine outside, if somebody wanted to buy it from me, I'd sell that one. But this one here, no. Uh, I've got it up in here, close enough to the close enough to the front. I can get around here, and uh, it's as clean as I'd want it to be. Really, it'll dry off. Uh, I'll probably come out here tomorrow and start it up, and get it so that any of the water that's in the bearings can be worked worked out if they're settled into the bearings or whatnot. This past winter, I was going to start it up and back it out. But the batteries were dead. Someone had left a key on. So, batteries were history. But the batteries, I charged them up. And obviously, it's working quite nicely. Um, so, yeah. I've got that job is complete. So, uh, the, the combine, will, it'll go right to the field and work. I mean, there's, you know, minimal stuff that needs to be done to it to actually be fully functioning. Um, yeah, but it does. I mean, it fully functions. I just hook the header up and oil and grease it, and she's good to go. Change oil, change fuel filters. Um, uh, probably hydraulic oil could use some attention because it's been sitting for so long. I have a straw chopper. That straw chopper, that thing actually, I would like to just take it off of there. If I use this thing again, take it off. The new, it needs new blades. It needs to be balanced. It, it started vibrating really bad and it caused these hairline fractures uh, to happen. Now there was a, a bit of damage that happened to this thing before we purchased it uh, and they they did damage there and they actually did damage to the uh, straw chopper which didn't help matters either. I mean a straw chopper works really good. I like the way it works but it's just you know <laughs> it's just kind of screwed up but uh, yeah so so that's it. Um, when I was done 2014 harvest, I was so pissed off because I only averaged 18 bushels to the acre because of the deer. And, uh, you know, uh, when you're fighting deer by yourselves, it's kind of difficult to do. Uh, it's just, it's not kind of difficult to do. It's downright impossible to do. So, we shot them. You know, I'm not shy. I'll tell you, we shot the damn things. There were... They were just unruly. Uh, there was nothing that we could do, whether we put lime, fertilizer, or whatever down. Potash, you could put potash down until you're blue in the face. It was never going to keep up to a herd of deer, uh, 40 deer on 20 acres. It just that they don't support that. Um, so I was so mad that I didn't care to ever even start the damn thing up again. But today, you know, we're looking at five days of rain, and I haven't, I haven't cut any hay, so. I figured that the combine was the way to go. You know, get that cleaned up and see if there's any damage done to it from mice. And believe it or not, there wasn't. I, I didn't. There, it's kind of stinky in there, but I think it's because of, you know, when we bought this thing, it smelled like mouse. But uh, I just opened up two boxes of mothballs and threw them in there, and that should keep the mice out of it now for a couple more years. But. Uh, I think I'm going to try and start it a little more regularly anyway, uh, you know, just because it needs to be done. So, but anyways, I guess that's it for now. I'm going to be moving some equipment around in here uh, a little bit, and uh, after that, I'm just going to go right on ahead and uh, go on home and get something to eat because I'm hungry. Thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe for more, if you want to.